Let me see your identification. Move along. Move along. And welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I just thought I'd talk about the lowly storm Star Wars Stormtrooper. Uh, specifically, his gun. I uh, just did a light gun video uh, previously for one of my video games I got recently. And it made me think about, uh, I haven't done a Star Wars specific video yet, or at least not uh, not for a while. And um, yeah, I wanted to talk very, very specifically about what is called the E-11, the Stormtrooper Rifle. Uh, the main reason I do is because I used to have one the toy version, and it's got a bit of a story to it, and I thought I would uh, just share that with you all. Uh, when Star Wars first came out, uh, George Lucas was uh, sh being shown all the different items that Kenner was coming out with, different uh, mugs, t-shirts, you name it, and apparently the story goes he looked at all of these wide variety of items and just said, where are the guns? Uh, so... He clearly knew right off the bat that, um, yeah, this series needs to talk about weapons. It's central to the whole wars theme of Star Wars. Uh, apparently, Kenner, at the time, they were a little nervous with uh, the Vietnam situation having just happened. They didn't know that whether or not guns for kids was a good idea. And they explained that to George. They said, uh, can we maybe do other things? Like, how about uh, teddy bears that look like Chewbacca, etc.? And to which George Lucas, the story goes, his reply was, where are the guns? So <clears throat> they made some. Now, um, they originally had two that I know of. There was the one that looked like Han Solo's, and then there was the one that looked like the Stormtrooper. And my brother had the Han Solo gun, and I got the Stormtrooper gun. Uh, the they refer to it in the series the, the the mythos as the E11 and it was actually based on a British gun the Sterling L2A3 submachine gun specifically Mark IV they say um, I'm going to insert a picture here of what the British gun looks like. And you can kind of see that there is, in fact, on the gun there, well, there's a good angle. You can see here, that's where the that extending ma am, am, magazine for the ammo would, would stick out if this was actually that, that pistol or that rifle. Um, and as you can see, this also had a folding stock. Now, that's significant. Um, Take away the and and actually apparently the Sterling did have problems with um, discharge of, of firing and they did actually put this little nozzle here. So this is a this is not much removed from the Sterling weapon. And Kenner decided, okay, well we'll make a gun version of that or a, uh, sorry a toy version of that gun. And I had it, <clears throat> and that leads to a whole story that I, I just got to share. Uh, in 1978, um, I live up in Canada, and Kenner of Canada, specifically, released a version of this pistol with a folding stock. Uh, it uh, actually had three positions, and I'll insert a photograph here of both what that toy looked like, both on the front and on the back, so you can see what the how the, it had the extending hand look specifically, or the extending uh, folding stock look specifically at the picture of the kid who's got it uh, extended out so that he can prop it up against his shoulder. So yeah, that uh, that was mine. I had one of those. Um, not long later, Kenner released a another version that was released worldwide and in the states and all that. And it was it did not have the folding stock. It was um, basically the same thing without that folding stock. And it it looked a little different. In fact, 
and this is what this video is about, it looked a lot like this. This is, now this is not that one that was released world, this is not the, uh, the 1979 one, I think. Uh, this one came out in 1996, and I simply had to get it. The reason being will be obvious pretty soon, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this is what the E11 toy is today. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, the white coloring I'll get to in a moment. But this is that same toy mold. I mean, I, I remember the feel of it in my hand, the original folding stock one. And you can almost make out here and here were points where that folding stock would kind of, it would, it, it rested on this and it swung up and clipped into position and the little um, uh, handle part would go here. So if you can imagine this with an, a little extra on here, it would have the appearance of that, that that toy that you can see here, or the, the gun that it is. So, now why have I got this and not the original? Okay. I went and got the one with the folding stock, and I believe it was very expensive for 1978, something like $20. My goodness. Uh, King's Ransom in those days. And I primarily got it because my brother had the Han Solo one, so it made sense I should have the other one. Plus, I was very much a Luke Skywalker fan over a Han Solo fan. And um, the picture on the cover, as you may recall on that screenshot I just showed, had Luke holding it when he and Leia are escaping the Death Star. So, I wanted to get the gun that Luke used. Um, it was really, really nice. And it's, it's interesting to compare it to this. I mean, this came out 18 years later and is in some ways superior and yet in some ways is inferior and I find that quite surprising. Uh, the original, and there are some videos on YouTube of people selling these, not too many videos just talking about it, which I find surprising, that's why I'm posting this, but there are videos where you can see the actual mechanism. Um, the barrel on the 1978 with the folding stock, it, this is, um, it won't come out in the video, but this barrel is just Okay, there, you can see there's glare. It's just um, little pits and then it goes to plastic. On the original toy, that was this was actually hollow and you could see a little yellow, uh, uh, like a barber pole kind of a thing inside there. And when you pulled the trigger, it would spin and it would make it look like these lights were going out, kind of like uh, the beams of light coming out, which was very, very cool. Um, also, a difference of the times, uh, you didn't have this yellow plastic thing. This is a, a requirement by law now. And interestingly, I've looked at some of the 1978 gun for sale. Uh, one fella had to actually put a piece of uh, uh, an orange thing over the tip because that's a requirement, uh, at least on eBay, for where he was selling it. So, yeah, um, you didn't have that back in those days. Uh, what other differences? Well... The batteries used to go into the into a panel here. You would uh, there would be a D ring here that you would unclip. Then this would come off, and this was a whole panel here. You just sort of slid off, and uh, four C batteries I think went inside there to power the whole thing. Um, the sound effects of that original were just I guess connected to that barber pole action. They were just a grindy. Um, uh, I guess it was just a little cog with something spinning in it. Uh, probably like the way, um, way back in the day, kids used to put baseball cards in the spokes of the wheels of their bicycles, and it had that rapid flapping sound. That was what the gun sounded like. Like, that was all there was to it back then. But I did love that toy. That was an awesome toy. I would still have it today. If... Uh, there was a bit of an argument I was having with my cousin, and uh, we were, oh, I don't know, 12, something like that. The way cousins fight and argue. And I decided to whack him in the head with the gun. And it totally shattered the front, and it was broken, destroyed, thrown in the bin. Oh well, says I, that's just a toy. Not realizing... 
That one with the folding stock, made by Kenner of Canada, was a kind of a rare item. You don't really get them anymore. And in fact, the one that's more like this, that was released uh, the same year, or the next year, was the was to become the standard. And I would have much preferred the one with the folding stock. I wish I had kept that thing. I wish I had not hit my cousin in the head with it. Oh, if I could take that time back. But, say la vie. So, uh, 1996 rolls around, and I see this in the store. I think it was about 25, 30 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna undo what time did. I'm gonna buy this one. Because it is the same uh, toy, it's just, been, obviously they had to, as not only making the orange tip, they had to very much uh, change the way it looked so that it wouldn't be confused. Because wasn't there that uh, case, I don't remember where it was, but some kid had pulled out a, a water gun and a policeman thought it was a real pistol, so the kid I think got shot. And so the laws had to be changed so that toys didn't look, toy guns didn't look as convincingly like real guns. Now, there's an interesting part of this story. It was 18 years between this and the 1978 toy. If you consider this came out in 1996, it's now currently, in 2014, another 18 years later. And what a difference 18 years makes. But I'll, I'll get to that. So, okay, so the original toy had that neat blaster movement here, and it also made the grindy sound. This is in many ways an improvement. Um, it has a digital sound effects chip inside it, so it actually has the sounds from the from the show, and the, uh, the little nozzle does light up. In some ways, it's a much better toy. And in fact, let me uh, play them. So there's basically two different gun sounds. That's all it does. And uh, I'll do it so that it's... Uh, you can see the light action. And if you pull the trigger rapidly while one effect is going on, you keep getting that sound. If you see what I mean. So, yeah, in many ways, this is a superior toy to that one in 1978. Still wish I had the one from 78, but regardless. So... What else to say about this one? Well, this one is still available today. Uh, it's, it's 18 years later, and they actually have this in Disneyland now. Um, you can get them for, I've read online, something like 25 bucks. Uh, interestingly, though, there are auctions online and uh, some links. I'll, I'll, I'll put links below, but you can see uh, people selling this on Amazon for up to 75 bucks, which is odd. I mean, if they're just sitting in Disneyland for 25, why are people paying 75? I think there's a little bit of a legend to this, to this particular gun because that folding stock went away. Uh, and, and that one is the rare one. There is this feeling among sellers that this is a rare toy. It's, it's actually not. Um, the ones on the uh, Amazon listings I've had a look at, and they claim that the lights will illuminate the barrel, and they don't. Uh, they actually, just like this one, at least according to reviewers, of people have said, hey, I thought it lit up the barrel. It doesn't. It actually just lights up the tip. Much like this. And as you can see, that's not, that's not lighting up the barrel at all. Just, just the tip, so... Uh, people are being a little loose with their facts, I think, in order to make people think, oh yeah, it's that gun, that rare one. No, no, it's not. Still, um, there was one made a little bit after this one in the 90s that was kind of a, a change again away from this white design. It actually was a camouflage uh, more of a black gun, and it's it's strange to me that they would make something so clearly not a real-looking uh, weapon look a little more real. I mean, the camouflage. I'll 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 insert a picture here. You see what I mean? It's it's a little more like a gun, but it's not actually, uh, on close examination, that wouldn't look like a real piss, uh, a real weapon of any type. But 
Uh, that one, the camouflage one, is actually going for a lot of money now, like over $100. So um, there is one final version of this, which is currently available on the Hasbro site. And it's kind of like they took this design. It's again painted white again. And they went all funkadelic with it. They made it kind of look uh, like a disco gun. Uh, let me um, let me insert a picture of that one here. So there you go. That one's for twenty bucks. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with this. Don't get me wrong. And. I think it's interesting what a what a difference 18 years makes, uh, f both from the original folding stock gun to this, and then from this to that funky Hasbro $20 one. I don't know what the sound effects are like, but just think. I mean, if they wanted to make this today, they could have much more realistic or closer to the original movie sounds coming out of it. They could do a lot more. I don't know why they haven't. But, yeah. So the uh, the Star Wars E11, it's... It's a great toy. It's uh, I still appreciate having this one in my collection. I'm very happy that I have it. But oh, oh, if I had a time machine and I could go back and stop myself from whacking my cousin over the head with the folding stock. I have looked for that gun online, and it goes for literally thousands of dollars. That's how rare that one is. Oh well, lesson learned. And until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.